Hello everybody, and we got the trainers to start us off here today, and as I said, I would, I'm going to send Zabdos in the lead, because it needs the experience from these trainers rather badly, I might add, so that it doesn't totally lag in terms of levels behind my other team members once I get out of here, so that I only have to play catch up with Heatran instead of doing it with both uh, Heatran and Zabdos. Anyway, yeah. Uh, this is back to Pokemon Platinum for now, which means another two months until uh, I upload another Zelda video. Nah, 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 just kidding. It's, it's not gonna take two months. It's gonna take four instead. No? Not funny? Not funny at all? No? Okay, okay, fine, 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 okay. But uh, anyway, yeah, when it comes to Pokemon, uh, well, we've got uh, some uh, pretty bad news uh, in uh, recent days because um, of, you know, the new Dream World scoring method, because they, a they actually, as it turns out, they actually changed it uh, when, um, when it got its international launch, and great. And my Zabdos is paralyzed, and now Claydol's probably gonna die next turn. Fantastic, so that means my paralyzed Zabdos is gonna be all alone against an army of Pokemon. Well, not all alone, because I got a few other Pokemon of my own. But still, I really wanted Zabdos to get as much as much experience as it could, and with Claydol dead so fast, it's not going to be nearly as easy. But um, as I was saying, uh, they changed uh, the way the scoring in the Dream World works uh, with the international release. And uh, what happened was that uh, well, I, I'm not going. I don't really remember all the details of how many points doing this and that. Uh, how it works anymore, but I do know for a fact that uh, harvesting berries does not give you points. It only gives you berries. Still a pretty good reason to uh, harvest them either way, because it's the only way you can uh, harvest berries in the game, since there are no uh, soil patches in the game, or you don't have those pots from Hard Gold and Soul Silver either. You just have the Dream World to get those berries in large quantities. Either that, or you pinpoint specific Pokémon to uh, use Thief on for the really low-end berries, like the first five and Oran berries. But, uh, yeah. Um, as I was saying, perhaps the biggest, most annoying change is that uh, nowadays you only get 20 points for uh, getting... Uh, for, for actually winning at uh, a minigame. That means uh, bursting 15 balls uh, on the Wailord minigame, getting 20 inches on the ice cream minigame. Just 20 inches, that's not a lot, even if uh, an ice cream 9-11 happens uh, late in the game. And uh, finding the Pokémon in Pokémon Seek, and getting to the end in the Pelipper minigame. So that's all you have to do, and you get 20 points flat. But that means that there is no incentive whatsoever to do good on those minigames. It was believed at the very beginning that uh, doing good at the minigames was how you obtained special moves uh, on your Pokémon that you couldn't obtain otherwise, unless, of course, you, it came from a Generation 4 Pokémon, but we're talking about Dream World Pokémon here, so they wouldn't have access to them normally. But, um, yeah, as a result, yeah, it, it, that's bullshit. Uh, it's decided completely randomly. It doesn't matter which score you get, you will always obtain 20 points, and you might not get a special move. So there's... Thanks for killing my Zabdos, by the way. But, uh, yeah, that means that there's no incentive whatsoever for doing good on those minigames. You just have to win. That's it. That is completely stupid. You get the same thing for getting 120,000 points on the Waylord minigame as you would getting just 10,000. And that's just complete crap. Because that one time I obtained 120,000 points, it was so freaking awesome. I was amazed at how well I did. And by the way, I didn't let anything drown on that particular run. Wish I had recorded it, but I didn't know it was going to happen, obviously. But, um... Yeah, basically, it just sucks how it works now. So, um... Now you get you also get 50 points just for logging into the dream world. You don't get 50 points for actually sending a Pokemon back to your game, which I guess is a, is a slight improvement. But it's but if you're going into the dream world, you might as well bring something back. So yeah, it's easier to score those 50 points, but at the same time, well, 
whatever, I'm just rambling on at this point. But, uh, just to say that the tutorial I made a few weeks ago is completely useless now! It's completely obsolete because they changed it! Yeah, wonderful. However, my method still remains a pretty good method for, um, obtaining points, even though you don't really need to harvest your berries anymore or use the share shelf. Um, because, uh, that whole share shelf thing was what hinted, uh, people that, you know, something might be wrong here, because you're supposed to obtain one point whenever you, whenever you share with the share shelf. However, that doesn't happen anymore, and that's because the share shelf is now basically completely useless. It doesn't give points anymore, and it's completely impossible to get a score that's not a multiple of ten. So, yeah, that's how it is, so... Yeah, I apologize for my tutorial being completely useless, but now at least you know I've come back on it, and that's okay, I guess. Still would have liked to, to have those points for harvesting berries or for doing good on mini games. But oh well, the dream world was designed from the start to be crap anyway. And uh, speaking of crap, I you know how we're all sick of Bidoof by this point? Well, the dream world managed to do something that I didn't thought was possible. It made me sick of seeing Bidoof with an ability so strong it was actually banned. That's right, whenever I'm in the forest and I see a pond or something where there's something inside, I all, I'm always like, Oh my god, oh my god, this might be a polywag! This might actually be a polywag! And when I click on it, it's always, always a freaking Bidoof. Oh, not always. Sometimes, on rare occasions, it'll be a Surf Gift, but otherwise, it's always a freaking Bidoof. I have, I've had uh, over 10,000 points for quite a while now. I haven't seen a single, um, a single Volpix, and I haven't seen a single, a uh, single Poliwag either. I did find uh, a multi-scale Dratini. However, I have one right now. Um, no, it's. Marvel, Marvel scale Dratini. It evolves into multi scale Dragonite, but as a Dratini, it has a, it has a Marvel scale. And uh, something else that I wanted to talk about today, I was listening to um, Big Dip on a Bus's uh, latest episode of um, Mario Galaxy, and at one point he started talking about you know the legitimacy of the death trick as a strategy in a coinless run of that game, and he compared it to. You know how you can uh, you you can breed uh, using a hack Pokemon as a parent, and some people will actually consider the offspring legit. For example, he used the example of use of hacking a female evolution in order to make uh, a legit Eevee with its Dream World ability, which I don't really really remember what it was. And don't tell me anyone I can check Cerebi myself if I ever want to know. Not that I care, because seriously, who would ever use an unevolved Eevee competitively? But uh, since they're, since, uh, they're about to get uh, an actual Dream World Eevee event in Japan, that, that example doesn't work quite as well, so I'm gonna explain my point with something else. Mamoswine. In Japan, they've already had uh, a Dream World event for Mamoswine. Pick fat Mamoswine, in fact. Excellent ability for it, as it neutralizes the, the the fire weakness, and it also gives it an ice resistance, which is always cool. Um, however, the problem with uh, that Dream World Mamo Swine is that... Eh, sorry, I'm just gonna switch back to Zabdos again. But, yeah, the problem with that Mamo Swine is that, once again, it's male only. And that means it's literally locked with only uh, level up moves and TMs. That's it. Generation moves are out, and um, egg moves are also out. Now Mamoswine is very, very, very heavily reliant on those moves in order to do any damage at all, so Thick Fat Mamoswine is entirely worthless. However, there are some people who say that, you know, you hack a female Thick Fat Mamoswine and breed it to get um, a uh, a p potentially female uh, thick fat swine up, which could have egg moves, and some people would actually consider that legit. And quite frankly, well, that's just the stupidest load of bullshit I've ever I've ever heard. Though not maybe I've heard a lot of bullshit in my time, but still, 
come on, how can the offspring of a hack Pokemon be legit? Of course, the game would probably recognize it as legit since the game doesn't know yet that there hasn't been a, a bi-gender swine-up distribution through the dream world, so to speak. But uh, that still doesn't make it uh, legit. Uh, it's still impossible to attain unless you cheat. So I just wanted to know your opinion on this. Is there anyone among my viewers who really thinks that such a swine up with thick fat and either male or female potentially with egg moves as well would be legit? Because personally, I say no, 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 no. That cannot be legit. Proof. Well, maybe not proof, but uh, it's a definite fact that uh, you try that shit on uh, Pokemon Online, it will never work. You will not get your thick, fat, ice shard Mamoswine ever. And that's a damn shame, too, that it's only male, because Mamoswine is one of those Pokemon that could really, really, really benefit from its uh, Dream World ability, because right now its best ability is a Snow Cloak. Um, which, um, well, there's this whole argument about Sandvale, but uh, as I said, I'm going to keep it for a little closer to the actual nomination stage. But the uh, Snow Cloak still isn't that good an ability, especially since it basically requires you to use a Boma Snow, which, if memory serves me correctly, is well below Mamoswine on the usage lists anyway, and uh, Hail Teams aren't that good from the start. So, yeah, um... Mamoswine has a completely useless ability that is oblivious, an ability that could sometimes maybe be useful uh, in Snow Cloak, and Thick Fat would be awesome. Uh, would, would, would getting Thick Fat uh, with unrestricted move pool be enough to push it back into overuse? Maybe, maybe it could happen, because uh, I don't think it's that far off, if memory serves me correctly. But uh, that reminds me, the other day I was talking about uh, QRAM with someone in the comments, and uh, I realized this, that, you know, last gen people were, were complaining that there were, that there were only two ice types in overuse, namely uh, Weave Island Mamoswine. Well, uh, this generation it's even worse because it, it looks like we're going to only have one this time around. That being Cloyster, and that's only because of the massive improvements to um, to uh, Icicle Spear as well as the appearance of Shell Smash, because uh, otherwise we might be looking at a situation where a type would be completely unrepresented in both overused and ubers, and that would be really, really, really weird. And I'm sorry, I just went on another tangent. I was talking about uh, hacking, and I was and I ended up talking about uh, Mammo Swine's worth competitively, and it looks like I have I forgot to uh, send Cresselia back in the lead. So I don't have that much time left, so I'm going to send out uh, Giratina to do a little cleanup job here. It's not like... Uh, what, what, whatever little experience Cresselia loses will be that much of a problem, because Zapdos is going to get some too, and uh, it needs... Um, the experience, even though, yeah, after this battle ends, I'm going to put Cresselia back in the lead, and after that, and probably go, just gonna pick up the item that's just ahead, and and it's right there. But, uh, yeah, I've been thinking about what I wanted to do once this run of Stark Mountain was over, and, um, yeah, after, after that's over, I'm still gonna need to come back for a few items that require Rock Climb as well as Heatran itself, and I have been wondering whether I want to do it in a one trip or two separate, two separate ones. Right now, I'm, I'm leaning towards one, but um, uh, I guess we'll see when we get there. I still have some time to think about it. So, Cresselia back in the lead, pick up the item, and that's going to be it for today. Next time, yeah, more Stark Mountain! <laughs>